Okay, this is a typical uh, Linac room right here. This is a linear accelerator uh, by Varian. Um, first thing you want to do when you uh, when you uh, come for an install in a, in, in a Linac environment is to talk to the uh, the uh, in charge physicist um, and find out what his expectations are for where he wants the lasers lined up to. Um, Normally we line up to this crosshair in the column meter right here, and um, um, that's by bringing this whole gantry to the uh, um, 270 position and the uh, 180 position, and uh, being able to uh, use a level, whether it's a digital or a bubble level, and make sure that this vertically and horizontally are level and that the numbers on the digital display match. We're trying to match and make sure that this is, this is uh, uh, at 270. As you see, gantry right there it says 270. We want to make sure that says 270 and that this is level both vertically and horizontally. Um, when it is in that position. And then once you find that out and make sure that that's correct, you need to rotate the gantry to the other side and do the exact same thing. Make sure that, uh, that it, it's level both horizontally and vertically when the gantry says it's at 90 degrees. And also the column meter, which is this right here, the rotation of this, is uh, exactly square also. So you just need to make sure that this matches that. If it doesn't, you need to bring it to the physicist's attention and uh, uh, ask him which, which numbers he wants you to go by when doing the laser alignment. Does he want the, us to align to this crosshair when that's at 90 and 180, or does he want to align to um, 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 this, this level, when it says it's level at 180 and 90 rather than the numbers because sometimes when this says it's level that'll say 91 90 90.5 so you have to you have to find out which one the physicist wants to go by once you determine that uh, then you can proceed with the, uh, the laser install um, just need to get everything set up and ready Um, we just finished uh, unpacking all four lasers, and in each laser box was one laser with the cover, one power supply, one uh, a data cable to go to from uh, the remote to the laser, remote control unit, and all the mounting hardware for each one of them. Okay, we were talking about uh, how we need to make sure that this is uh, plumb, uh, both in the uh, 80 and the uh, one, uh, the 90 and the 180 position. Um, Gary here has a digital has a digital level, and as you can see, this way it's at zero. Once we had the column meter level, like we did before at 270 or 180, we need to move the gantry back up to zero. Once we get it here, we need to make sure that the display on here is zero and that it matches the gantry rotation here at zero. And the column meter has never moved, which we already set before. So once this is set, we need to turn on the field. And we need to adjust the field jaws. We, need to, we want to make that as large as we can. So to do that, you just need to figure that out on your controller and make these large. So we have a larger 
line to work with. Once that's done, then we can do both sides. What we're doing is the jaws are actually inside the collimator here, and we're opening up the jaws to allow more light to come out the entire field of view here to give us the full crosshair that is in the collimator here. Um, before the jaws were, were like this and like this, it just made a small little light on the table. We want the full, the full crosshair out here so we open the jaws allowing more light through the, through the collimator to shine onto the table here. And this is occurring after you've leveled both after both leveled axis for way. 270. Yeah, we've already done that. We showed right. that. One, 90 here. and then back up to zero. Yep. Correct. Correct. Okay. So now we're just aligning. Um, now we want to lower the light down so we can we can see this crosshair uh, a little better, and then we're going to spin that line. We need two points to be able to spin the line to know that it's it's going to be exactly straight across the room. Otherwise, you could spin this line and still be at an angle. So we need this reference point as well as this reference point here. So Gary is going to set up the spinner to where it spins that. Once it spins that, we'll be able to know exactly on each plate where those lasers are supposed to mount this way. Oh, so now we want to move the table height to on the SSD and make that 100 so it's on the crosshair. So we just match. This 100 runs through the line here. So now we know we're at ISO center height, and now we're going to adjust, uh, run our spinning laser on to, so you can turn the SSD off, and we just have to match what's on here. So you've laid the paper down on the table so you can see the shadow of the crosshair. Correct. Okay. Eventually. You're lighting the light now on the shadow of the crosshair from the collimator. Correct. Correct. And the closer you can get to being exact on this alignment, the better we're going to be when we hang the lasers on the on the side because just a slight a slight being off from the line at this point results in a large deviation over at the wall so Gary's going to get it as right on as possible and it, it has to fall up here also so We just use paper up here because it's a little easier to see the uh, the projection. So what you want to see is that the dot is cutting, or the line is cutting the dot in half all the way along the plane here and on the bottom on the table. So, so that gives you your two points up here and down there. So once that's done, then we just spin the line 
and that will be centered here and centered down here. So once we set it there and then centered here. So now we have our vertical plane. Now if you look over here on the plate, we have our line plane. here and we have our line over there. This is at least going to give us a reference on where the laser goes in this direction. Mm -hmm. We'll spin the other line to be able to know where the laser goes in this direction. Okay, you can stop there. Okay, what we're going to do now is, since we have this plane across the room, we're now going to spin this plane around across the room. What that we're going to have to do to do that is rotate the gantry over here to the 90 or 270 uh, degree area, and we're going to spin this collimeter line just like we did with this one, with this one, this way. So we'll rotate the gantry. So you've established the vertical plane, We've established and the you're leaving plane. that one sit because it's dead on. Correct. And now you're going to take another laser spin for the horizontal, horizontal plane, line. and that you're rotating the gantry to the 270 position That's so that you can align the the uh, the other spinning laser with the the uh, the uh, reference lines. That's correct. Okay. There now we're at 270, and what Gary's doing is double checking to make sure that the gantry is plumb straight up and down. So, yeah. So right? Yeah. This is 90. This is at 270. We're level here. So now we're just going to lower the table to match the horizontal plane. So Gary will turn on the laser there. So you again check the... the uh, no, we're good right now. We you we'll check, check the, the... make sure it's level. To make sure it's level again. Yes. And that the you're at... The meter's already been set from the very beginning, so you never touch it after Okay. That. So now you just lower okay. the table so down. I'll lower the table. You can see we're just going to line it up with that horizontal line now. Oops. So I went a little too far. We'll bump it up a little. Down. Maybe down just right in there. A little bit. Spin it to see how it looks. Now he's spinning it to make sure he's got the same thickness of line across there with no skew in it. And that looks really good. So each, everything lines up. Okay. So now I'm going to move the column, the uh, the gantry out of the way. Okay, because right now we're we're actually we're you seeing see that side. Let me just. We could use that right here. I really don't even need that. Mm -hmm. Oh, because you've not you now have established the two, reference, two lines, reference lines, and that's the center point where you want the laser. Correct. The lens to be centered directly on the crosshairs of those two um, reference lines. Okay, since we have the crosshair of the spinning laser, as you can see here and here, projected up over here on this plate, Gary's now lining up the, the uh, horizontal lens, which is this top one, with this horizontal line, okay? Um, he's also using a level to make sure that the line, the, the spinning laser line is going through the horizontal lens as well as having the entire laser level. Okay? Um, you could still have that line going through that lens and the, and the whole laser assembly be, be at, an, at an angle like this and you don't want that. So that digital laser is absolutely essential for, for getting it's, it's very nice to have. accuracy. Yeah. It's an easy yeah. way to assure. And what we do is we plug in the laser so it's projecting its green laser line so we can see when we put this piece of paper up there if it's in the right location. Now Gary can move that around and tell these Tell the spinning laser yep. reds line they're up with they're all the dead center on that, and he's got that level. I'll zoom in on that. Hold it there a second. Okay, good. 
them. Okay, once we once we have those right on, now we mark the holes. Try to center them so you have a little bit of movement back and forth. And now we can take this whole assembly down and drill the holes. Okay. Uh, did we just blow a breaker or something? Alrighty, we took the laser down. Now we're going to drill the holes that we marked. Once we drill the holes, then we're going to use a tap and just tap it. takes is the two, uh, the two bolts with a washer and the elongated nut for the back. Move slow when you, when you do that or keep it in the center reference so I can zoom in and... I don't know. Okay. But you're, yeah, it's fine. Just, just like what you're doing. I'm, I'm, just, now up I'm just showing them. Okay. Okay, gentlemen, I'm going to leave you. Uh, okay. Okay, I got it uh, loosely mounted up on the wall right now. I'm going to plug this back in because I want to put this paper back up here to be able to get this thing lined up correctly um, um, now that we have it bolted up. Little snug. I'm going to bring this in somewhat tighter so I don't have a spar to, to drive these once uh, we have it level. So you want a little resistance to hold it, but... It's not a bad idea, yeah. Exactly level, like it's level level. If you had a bubble level, this should be where it, all right. You'd have to eventually uh, adjust the skew, which we'll get to later. But as you can see, this looks relatively good now. The red lines to the to the green diode, the laser coming through. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, since these are remote control lasers, we uh, adjust the the line back and forth by a remote control, and this is the receiver. So we plug this stuff in. You see it lit. Gary selected number one because this is addressed through switch packs on the bottom to address number one. This, is, I believe, is in hexadecimal. So you just uh, you need that at, at, uh, at one. Stop. All right, now that we have the laser, uh, the, the assembly up, we feel we like where it's at, and we, uh, with the spinning lasers, 
and we like that this is at uh, is level or at zero. Um, now we uh, just with the uh, remote control, it has one through five here, okay, and each one of these receivers is addressed on the bottom one through five. This one is addressed to one, so what we do is we we uh, 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 push the unlock button right here. The light will light. Push number one. It will now communicate with this laser and will be a, will be allowed to move the laser line back and forth. Over here on the collimeter, if you look, I will press the arrow. Okay, if you look now, I'm going to be pushing the, the arrow, the left arrow on the remote control. And as you see, the line moves, the green line moves. We're going to move that green line to the red spinning line. So the vertical green line for laser one is right. moving and over. And we're also going to move the horizontal one down to the spinning line. Now we're going to we're going to actually stop the spinners pretty soon and actually align to the crosshair on the collimeter. Um, wow. So that's what we'll do shortly. Or we can. Okay, once I've moved the laser line, um, to the spinner, as you can see, it, we use paper a lot because it's easier to see the laser. So I'm going to move that green line right on top of the, of the red one, right like that. And I'm going to move the horizontal one, as you can see there, down right on top of there. Okay, now, once these are roughly set like this, we need to do uh, uh, check it for skew, which means the laser line would be angled one way or another. And we have all these papers taped together so we can get a long line. You need a long line to be able to see that skew because it could be right on in this short distance, but over this other, this long distance, it might come off a little bit. So we're going to hold this up like this. And as you can see, it's, it's not too bad. That, that actually is following the spinning laser really well. And I notice you put your hand in front to compare uh, that's each what, line to that's hide what one. what Gary's doing right now. He's putting his hand in front of, of, of the laser, the green laser, so he can see if that laser line is actually tracking right on top of the spinner. And it... And it very minute is very critical. Do you think it's tracking off a little on the bottom there? Okay, we we feel that this is this is really nice. This is this is how it should be. Following that red line exactly. Same width on both sides. No no deviation. Okay, now we need to check this line. So I'm going to turn this sideways. And we're going to hold it up here, like so. And check that other spin, this one. And that looks like it's... And that looks real good, too. Well, it's just a little bit. It's lower over here and it comes up over here. Okay, it looks like it's a little bit low here. If you look at the red line, the green line is a little low in that line. And when you come over here, you look at it and oh, I think here it's probably in the middle over here, and it's on the bottom over right here. It's just so a little bit. We feel that skew is just a little bit like this. Okay, we feel that. Oh, you mean it's low over here? Yeah, it's low over here. Excuse me, skew is like this. The line is low over here and high over here, only because the green laser line is in the middle of the red line over here, and it's in the bottom of the red line over here. So what Gary's going to do now is adjust the laser itself, so this comes up a little bit, and. So you need to find the horizontal plane 
laser, which is the top one. If you need to, just block one out, trying to find out which one it is. So you block the light out. And it's the top one that we need to rotate this lens clockwise or counterclockwise. That's how we like it. And then we have to do that, you need to loosen it. You have to loosen it with an Allen wrench, the smallest Allen wrench, I think it's a .50 Allen wrench, which comes in the tools packet. And you need to loosen the screw on the side. It's kind of hard to see in this light, but okay. So we just loosen it, and then we need to rotate the lens. Yeah, why don't you rotate it severely? If you look at this, there, Gary has rotated the lens. Now the skew is way off. He's going to rotate the lens back now. And the lens is the green light and the laser is the red, okay. So he rotated the green to get it back because it was low. It was low on this side over here. Okay. So we want to get it directly in the center of that spinning laser all the way across. Okay, now that uh, we have skew aligned correctly, um, we're going to um, um, put the lines directly where they're supposed to be on the collimator. So we're going to turn off the spinners. You don't want to move them, just, and just turn them off. just in case you got to go back, you know, and do something, try not to move the spinners. Okay. Leave them, leave them right where they are. We'll turn on the field light in the collimator. It's a button usually on the on the uh, on the uh, table or on a handheld pendant like this. You'll be able to do that. So we turn on the field, and now we're able to um, remotely. Remember, we selected number one, so we're going to remotely move these lasers. Move the vertical line over Oops, the see, I moved it too far, so now I'm going to move it back right on top. You, you can take your finger again if you see on there the black and see if it's straight. That looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, good. How about the horizontal? Right to me. Okay. So, once, so once these are on, we're done with that side and we need to move to the other side. So then we can just rotate the gantry out of the way. So rotate it back up. So we rotate the gantry on with this uh, pendant. Not the column, maybe the gantry. So we'll the gantry. Okay, stop. stop. Okay. Okay, we're going to rotate the gantry now. Since we uh, know that the lasers are, are, this laser is finished and it's set up good on the on the collimator crosshair. So we're going to rotate the gantry out of the way. Use, use that laser for our reference. And now that laser that we just that we just hung is going to shoot all the way across the room and give us a crosshair on the other wall. Similar to what the red lasers did initially for this side. Exactly. And okay. we're going to use the laser that we just hung as as the uh, like reference. A spinning laser, as a reference. Correct. Okay. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel twice. Okay. Correct. Okay. What we're going to be doing now is hanging the second laser using the crosshair, the green crosshair of the one we hung just previous as the reference point. So now Gary's coming up and he's going to level the laser and make the top lens, the horizontal lens, through this line. This line's got to run through that lens. So I'll help by holding the paper. And that looks pretty good right there, but he needs to have it level. 
there's zero and he's pretty much right on right now if you pull this back just a little bit you can see how the laser tracks on those lines and those lines are from the laser across the across room across the room now i'm going to mark the holes We're going to take it off and we're going to drill those holes, tap them, and do the same sequence as we did before. Okay, okay now Gary's just mounting the second laser, finding the holes. He's going to somewhat tighten them down. Put the level on, plug in the laser, turn it on, and again line it up to that crosshair from the one across. So the dots of light are, are the laser we're in front of and the lines are what are shooting it from across the room. That's correct. So as you move it out you're generating a starting of a line and you're looking to see where it ends up. Yes. So now we're just tight. Just to get you fairly close. Yep. And then we'll do the fine adjustment in a little bit. Okay now that we have this laser mounted we're going to uh, hook up the receiver so that our transmitter works. Take your network cable, the one end goes in underneath, the other end goes to the receiver. We now want to select, we want to turn on the device. Select number two, and now hopefully be able to adjust it. Cut. Okay, now that we've hung that one, we plugged in the uh, the receiver uh, transmitter. Um, we uh, now projected the line over to here, and as you can see, it's off. This one, this laser, was the first one we hung, and remember, we like this one. This was the one we lined up with the collimator. So what we want to do is line up the laser we just hung, which is projecting this line now, with this laser. So if we put this over here, I'm going to move the vertical line over. From the laser across the room. From the laser across the room. Right in line with the vertical one here. As you can see, I'm pulling away. I have it, this one right here. And I have it right on the line. Okay, now I also want to take this line, which is the horizontal line, and move it up to this horizontal line here. So these two are going to match all the way across. So I'll take the remote, and we'll move that line up. Now, it looks like they're right on all the way across. Cut. Okay, now that we we lined them up over here with with the paper, we want to check at ISO Center how they look there. So we're going to come over here, we're going to take our paper, since the laser shines through the paper, we can see, see they're a little off right there, okay? But if you look down here, see where my finger is, right at this section right there? It's right on. But when you go up, the laser in question, which is the one behind the paper here, the lighter and, line, and is the lighter line on that side, goes to that side of the line. And I, as you go down, it gets good, but as you go down farther, it's actually coming on this side of the line. So this laser that we just hung is tilted a little this way tilted a little this way. 
and that skew is off. So we need to skew it back in. And we'll show you how to do that here in just a second. Okay, as you can see, the skew that we were talking about, here you gotta move. The skew, it comes off to this side, and as we go down, it comes off the other side. So the skew is like this right now. We need to move it back like this. Okay, and Gary's going to do that right now for you. If you pan over here, he's also going to show you where the focus is. Okay, we forgot to talk about the focus. If your your line is is really fat out there, if it's not less than one millimeter, and you get an ISO center to focus it, there is a round cylinder inside here that you need to loosen some set screws and then you need to move the cylinder up and down until you like the focus and then you need to re-tighten the set screws. So that's how you would focus it. There's a cylinder inside here. And then now as far as the skew again, you need to figure out which lens it is, which lines it is, and this one just happens to be the vertical. So that is the, just blocking the line to figure out which one it is. So you, it just happens to be the bottom lens. So we need to rotate the lens again find, use the Allen wrench, find the set screw that's in there that holds the lens, loosen that up, and then I need to rotate, rot as you see over here, rotate. Gary will rotate the lens and you will see the line. See how it rotated there? That was him physically taking the uh, lens and turning it with his fingers after he unloosened the set screw. Sometimes we make the lines next to each other rather than right on top of them so we can see the difference in spacing all the way down. If we can get the same space, then all we have to do is move the line over. It's a good, uh, a, a good way to view skew. It looks now like his spacing is pretty pretty good all the way up, so what he's going to do now is move the line over to the other one that we know is good. Okay, what we're going to do is move the line all the way over real close, not quite right on, but real close, and we can see that they're split here, and they're not very much split down here, so the skew is still off on this. Um, we need to get the spacing the same all the way down. Now Gary's doing the adjustment by hand again with that little lens. And that looks pretty good other than down here it's a little close. So you're making and them up here it's far You're making apart. them close together but not touching so you can see if they're parallel. Right, exactly. Before you move them on. Now that uh, we have the vertical skewed correctly to where both of these overlap, now we're going to do the horizontal. As you can see, Gary's adjusting the horizontal. And again, there's a little spacing there so we can actually see what kind of an angle it's at. Right now it's a little there. Thank you. Okay, as you can see, nice little space there, come across pretty much the same over here. So I think that skew is looking real good. Now I need to move the line down on top of this one. So what we're doing now is that everything's on line at ISO Center. 
we want to verify as we go away from ISO Center that we still have one line all the way across. So we still have one line, we still have one line vertically and horizontally, that we have one line all the way across, all the way across, all the way across until you get to the laser and you want to be in the same spots on here. And you do the same thing all the way to the other side. Make sure that you're not deviating. You just make sure you're not deviating. You do the same thing. So we're one line on one plane all the way across vertically and horizontally all the way across the room and onto the blazer with the paper. And that's your good. So you're good at this point. Okay, what we're going to do now, since we have these two lasers set and good, we feel, all the way across, we now need to mark both the ceiling plate and the plate at the foot of the, ta uh, foot of the bed here. So what we're going to do What we're going to do is spin this plane, okay? Since there's a cross here up here in the collimeter, we're going to project this down onto the table when the table's set at 100, okay? And you get the measurement projected on the table by hitting the button called SSD on the table. Once, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually move this out of the way. We're going to move it this way. Okay, but before we spin this line, we got to make sure that this thing is level now this way, and that the collimeter is not twisted this way in here. So we're just going to do a few checks prior to spinning this line with this, and with making sure that the table is set at the correct height. So now Bill's going to move the table back up to ISO center. ISO center, which is which is 100 on the table. So we're waiting. And I put the uh, the measurement on here, and SSD. that'll tell me when I'm at 100. Okay. So when I move the table up now, you see the crosshair. It's going up to 100 right here. There we have it set at 100. So now we can just turn that off. It's set right here, 100 runs right through the center of. So we turn the, the measurement line. off. And now we're going to do the spin the laser. Move that up to 100, and then we also move the gantry. We make sure that the gantry is back to zero. Gantry's at zero. This is at zero. And once that's level, then we're going to spin the laser. Again, Gary's going to use two reference points. He's going to use the line on the table plus the line up here that's that's uh, on the collimeter here. So he wants the laser to touch both of those. Right. You got to have two reference points to make sure that the line is going to be straight. Stop for a second. I'm just going to turn it on. And line it up. Now we're spinning a line along the the long axis of the table. Okay. So I just want to match. Line this up as best you can. You want to be as precise as you can. Make sure the the laser the line, line is touching the shadow from the yeah from the shadow the cutting the hole in half or the the circle in half or the dot in half all the way along the line so you're slowly adjusting the laser to make sure it's yep slowly adjusting it's it. not skewed and it's and it's running in the middle Paper. 
Okay, but then once I need the paper, it's good down here, and then I also need it to run to the center up on top, so I know that this is square and it's not shooting up one way or the other, so that this plane is straight up and down this That's way. your second reference. And I have my <laughs> second reference. I don't want it to be shooting this way, over-exaggerating one way or the other, but you want to make sure that this, is, this plane is, is square. So once that's set, you spin it, and we're running center here, center there, and center up here. That's what we want. Then now projects on the wall over here, which gives us our position for our laser this way. Is this the sagittal laser? This is a sagittal laser at the foot of the table. Just one line. It has to be mounted at least seven feet up in the air, and it you. you if you just have it high enough, that's fine. You won't have a position like this up and down on the laser only because you don't have a horizontal lens in this laser, in a sagittal laser. You'll only have this vertical line. Therefore, this is the only place you need to project the line up here. Okay, now that we're spinning the line up here, we're going to mount the laser. Again, we're going to put the laser line, the spinner, right in the center of this lens. And I could do it actually without turning it on by getting everything eyeballed centered. But the nicer way to do it is to make sure you're level. I think the other one will work better. Or I can't see that one. Put it on the side. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's a magnetic level, that's nice. So what I'm going to do is just... Now that we've marked the holes for uh, the sagittal laser, Gary's going to drill them. If you drill it, we need to tap them. So doing that on all, same on all of them. Okay. All righty, we're going to do the same thing with this one which is, uh, you know, just get it level and uh, tighten it down. Okay, okay we're just going to make this one level on the, on the level. Again, you just need it seven feet up in the air. You don't care if it's here, 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 but the higher the better. Because it's going to look down on the table, so you need it up high. We use the paper again to uh, line up with with uh, the spinner. You can see the spinner as we come out. We're on that line. <coughs> Tighten it down. Okay. Okay. Now that we have the sagittal laser hung. We're shining it now down on the table here. That's what this green line is. We also still have the spinning laser spinning because what we want to do is align this green line with the spinning laser's red line. That might involve doing a little skew adjustments on the laser itself. We also want to position the laser not to be hitting here on the table, 
as you see it wrapping around the corner here, and it only goes to about here, we want this line more up here where the patient's going to lay. We want the line right here, maybe from about this point on the table, right up to shining on the back of the gantry here. That's about where we want that line. So that's the adjustments we're going to make now. Once we have this line here, we need to position the laser on the table correctly. To do that, we need to move the lens assembly itself and the mirror assembly itself so that it shines where you want it and that you have it's come, there's a, a complete circle coming out of the lens. So it's a big dot, not a half moon circle, but a complete circle. Then you know that the lens is, is set correctly. If we uh, uh, do the skew by rotating the lens, then we need to move the whole laser line over, and then we need to hook up the receiver, uh, just like all the other ones, hook the receiver in, hook it in here, make sure it's addressed, and make sure you know which one you're going to talk with. This one just happens to be number three. Okay. So yeah, from that right point, here. now we just have to take the line and move it over. Now Gary adjusted the skew, and what we did on the skew to see that it was correct was we looked at the paper here, and you see the red line and the green line. And the green line is the same, runs right down the side of the red line, all the way down. Okay, and that's where we feel that the skew is correct now, okay? It's not at an angle from that red line. So now what we're going to do, since we feel skew is good, we're going to move this green line over to the center of the red line, okay? Or, if you can see, um, um, when the field comes on, the shadow, okay, like, uh, for example, right here. See how the shadow is underneath that red line? Yes. We want to move that green line to that shadow. Since the red line is so fat, it's, it, it's hard to get it actually centered. So we just want to put it on that shadowed line right there. So I'm going to take the uh, remote control and move the line to that shadow line. Well, what I'm doing with my hand here is just blocking the spinning laser. So you can see the shadow line. So I can see the shadow line instead. You know the laser's on, so you're looking the shadow line to the green line. Um, we'll just turn the laser off here so you can see the shadow line. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now, as you see, there's the, there's the line projected from the column meter on the table. We're going to move this over. Until it's right on, and if you do this, you just have to go here. From here, from the white line, or from this line blocked, and you walk it, chase it up all the way along. It's on the line as we as there. So that's what you want to do first. Okay. Now that we have the green line, the laser line moved on to the projected uh, line from the column meter, okay? Um, see as it's on the line there? Yep. Okay, now we need to move the table up and down because we got to have that line stay right there as the table goes down. If the line is cocked like this, then the line will walk off to the side when the table goes up and down. We want it to stay put. It can't move at all. And here we go. We'll, put, we'll make the table go down. And as we go down on the table, you can see the line stays on, on that projection. If you notice, it did come off just a little bit over here. It came off just a little bit. And as you watch, when I move the table up, the line will walk back on onto that projection. See, now it's on the line. So what that's telling me is that is that um, the line is skewed in let's just look at it one more time. 
as we go down, which way does the laser go? It goes that way. So Gary's hand here shows how the laser is actually shooting on the table. So we have to move it just a little bit to try to correct that. So we're going to try and adjust that skew. And we're going to try to adjust that skew. Okay, um, we uh, now have readjusted the skew. Gary readjusted the skew, and um, which is angling this line this way. And now we're going to move the table up again. As you see, it's right on the, the crosshair or the shadow. And we're going to move the table up and make sure that it tracks right on that. As you can see, it does a real nice job of stamp put. Both lines, both the sagittal and the cross. Yep. And if we get down low enough, we can see the, the side lasers coming across here. And if you look, the, those are right on the money too. Those are right on that crosshair. Okay, now that we have both the, we have this sagittal line where we want it, now we need to mark the ceiling plate. To do that, we're going to leave this one, which we spun the laser line this way, alone. We haven't touched it. It's still right on the line. Gary is going to place this one to spin the room this way from the lines that are projected across the table from the side lasers. So as you see, he's going to spin this one on that line and he's going to spin that one on this line. That will give us a crosshair on the ceiling, which will eventually uh, um, tilt the gantry off to the side so we have access to the ceiling. Once he starts spinning, we'll move this gantry to the side to be able to access the top. Okay, just remember that when spinning these lines, like Gary just set this one up, remember you need two, two reference points. He's got the line on the table here, plus he's got the line in the column meter up here. So just remember you need those two reference points in order to get that correct line. Okay, now that uh, both uh, spinning lasers are in their correct location, we're going to move the gantry away off to the side so we can project this crosshair up on this up on the ceiling. We don't need to, it makes no difference where the gantry is at the moment. Just get it out of the way. And uh, as you can see, there is a uh, crosshair now being projected up on the plate. Okay, Gary's going to uh, place the, the uh, receiver on top of the plate. Um, you're going to try to keep the, uh, keep the antenna um, away from any obstructions so he can get a good signal to the laser. So if you place the, the, the receiver all the way on top of the plate, you might have a bad signal because of the plate being in the way. So he's going to hang the antenna off the side of the plate up there. He's also plugged in the, uh, the power cord to the plug which is located above the plate usually. So you got to get that stuff all plugged in prior to getting the laser up there. So once we hang the laser, after we drill the laser, uh, drill the holes, so we can hang it, now we need to position it correctly and line it up the same way as all the other three. Just match the, match the lenses or match the, the diode to the uh, red crosshairs, spinning lasers, and then tighten it down, and that should be good, and then we just have to do the other stuff as far as skew and moving it after that. Okay, Gary's going to do a, a focus adjust on it now. As you see the line, this is how you want it, just like that. That's a beautiful line. That's it, and then once it's done, you just move the cylinder again, and then just... Tighten 
loosen, move it, and then retighten. And then you're going to use the remote control to move the line over where you just a bit too big. And now what we're going to do uh, is uh, take the spinners away and now nix that a second. Now that we've uh, 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 done the skew on this one, done the focus on it, and then moved the lines over to the center of the spinning lasers, we're now going to shut the spinning lasers off, remove them from the entire table here, and align the ceiling crosshair to the crosshairs that we've already uh, mounted uh, in the other lasers, meaning the sagittal and the two sidewalls. Okay, we're going to uh, put the covers on. There's two screws, one on each corner, that secures it, but you have to get these two little bushings down here in the proper location here on the, uh, on the laser to be able to make it go on easy. Um, be very careful. Any, any bumping of this uh, could, could change the uh, position of the laser line and you'd have to readjust. So just be extremely careful. I had to squeeze in on